Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP, I'm Lyndall Stout. Today we begin by talking about canola and like wheat, the weather this spring has certainly presented its share of challenges for producers. SUNUP's Austin Moore takes us to a canola field near El Reno. Josh, we've really seen some maturity problems this year in the crop as far as figuring out when to get it out of the field. Yes, uh, for a year that's been a constant struggle with no moisture. We finally get some right here at the end. Uh, unfortunately, some of those stress crops that were really, really needing a drink of water, uh, being an annual plant, is going to put on whatever it could. Mm -hmm. uh, with these late rains right at harvest, uh, canola being an indeterminate crop is going to try to reflower and set new pods with that new moisture it just got because uh, it knew it can do a lot better than what it did. Uh, so for guys that were able to have a crop that is far enough along to get it laid down into a windrow or terminate it with a desiccant, uh, prepare the crop in some way before those rains. Uh, probably fared a little bit better than those guys that waited. Uh, some of the guys we weren't quite there to terminate the crop either with a swath or a desiccant and we decided to wait to see what those storms provided. Uh, we got quite a, few, quite a bit of rain last week or two uh, and now these crops that are really stressed are starting to regrow. And so if they still have a crop out there standing, they're trying to determine what to do with it, you really have to determine where your uh, yield is. That first crop before those rains, if that was your major crop and still is, I would go after that crop, even though some of these later uh, pods uh, from these rains might add a little bit of yield. If you wait on those, these bigger pods that we first set are probably gonna shatter out. So that's the situation a lot of producers are in right now is how long can we wait obviously uh, like this field for instance we waited as long as we could to swath it you can tell we lost a few uh, right uh, when we uh, swathed it uh, so some did shatter at swathing but for the most part uh, he's able to retain most of that into the wind room without much shatter loss some guys that are really uh, had a lot of regrowth issues the probably the best scenario would be to terminate with the desiccant, a reglone, a bisyngenta, a diquat is the only really labeled uh, desiccant we have for winter canola in Oklahoma. Uh, that works great. Uh, use the full rate. Make sure you get good coverage. If you just get enough spray covers to get on top pods, those are the ones that are going to die. You really need that diquat, that herbicide, to get down here deep into the canopy to get a good dry down of the crop. Uh, as you know, it's usually we don't have that many leaves this time of year. Right. Uh, since we didn't, and some of our stands weren't the thickest. Uh, typically, if we have a thick stand, once we have this pod set, we start dropping those leaves, and the pods do the remainder of the photosynthesizing. Okay. If we have a thinner stand, uh, the sunlight's getting down and lower in the canopy. The crop's going to retain those green leaves, and with this late moisture, with those leaves, it's wanting to grow again. Uh, so getting that diquat as much as the pod canopy as you can and even some of those bottom leaves to really terminate that crop to where you can get in on a timely fashion. Uh, with the diquat it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive than a custom swathing uh, application uh, so you do have to pencil it out see if it works for you. Some guys that are starting to straight cut uh, this regrowth is a huge issue if we're trying to direct harvest it straight cut it with the right. combine uh, because that stuff we're going after is ripe but these flowers, these green pods, these green leaves, when it gets chewed up in the combine, it spikes that moisture. Gotcha. Uh, guys cannot deliver canola grain above 10% moisture. Uh, they uh, will reject you at the elevator. So trying to figure out how to get that seed without chewing up that much green material, opening your concave, slowing your, or your cylinder down, slowing your rotor down to try to prevent chewing up all these leaves and all these green stems if your seed is ready. Uh, right. Sometimes we have an issue if we have a lot of biomass out here and not a lot of pods in some areas of the state. We didn't get very good, uh, like we talked about before, didn't get very good pod set. Uh, so we got a lot of biomass, not a lot of seed, and sometimes that's issues trying to get it separated on the shoe. Uh, get those sieves set correctly, get your air to uh, air ratio uh, set to where you're getting enough to separate the material uh, but not blowing the canola seed out the back. Uh, typically we're allowed quite a bit of dockage with canola 
Uh, it's not a true uh, discount, but they just subtract the weight from the right. the form, the dockage material uh, from your canola weight. So leaving your sample a little bit trashy, if you have the luxury of keeping it with below that 10% moisture. Uh, but if we have a lot of green material out there, a lot of green regrowth, uh, we're going to have to try to clean that seed with the combine pretty heavily to get it under that 10% moisture. Now, what about guys, if they still want to get out there and swath the crop, is there time? There is still some time. Uh, some guys that are going late at night, early in the morning, if we have a dew on, uh, that little bit of extra moisture, that humidity. Uh, with these rains, a lot of guys are fighting humidity right now. That keeps those pods a little bit more tough. They don't shatter as much. Uh, I know this producer's got a little bit left and they're gonna wait till in the morning where we have a little bit of dew. Uh, some guys, if they have some really ripe seed and some of that later stuff is still a little bit green, if you have a tall enough crop, take more stem with the swath. Typically we're going just below the pods, uh, but if you take a little bit more stem, that's a little bit more moisture to finish out those green pods. Uh, so if they're able to still get in their swath without shattering too much, uh, running late at night or early in the morning is their next best bet. But uh, once you start seeing too much of the inside of the pod, that white, if yep. you're seeing a lot of white, uh, you know it's about time to put the swather away. All right. Now, what about insect pressure this year? Are we seeing much right now? Uh, this year has been fairly uh, gracious to us as far as insect pressure. Uh, here closer to harvest, we did find uh, a new issue come up this year, the harlequin bug. Uh, it's kind of a plant bug. We don't know too much about it, how much damage it really did. Uh, some stems, uh, you can tell they kind of drew down and drew some of that moisture out of that racine and pretty kind of limited what the, the seed set was. Uh, but for the most part, we don't know how much damage they caused. But typically, uh, we don't see that many of them. But this year, we saw a lot of them for some reason. All right. Thanks for the update. Josh Bashong, canola specialist here at Oklahoma State University.